I'm Lucy. Do you have a day? Bye bye. Today we're going to be opening a universal yum. This is the super yum box at the top level you can get for the box. And this month we got Russia. 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 So here's the Russia card with all the little plaques on it. I want to see what oh, this is. Then on the back we got the loading for all of us. Um, what snacks that we like them? We got a smiley face, an okay face, or a sad face. And then this is where you can find our vote for what we like the best and what we want to see next month and what didn't make it. This month they gave us a little sticker. Oh, that's cool. And here's the little doodaddy. doodaddy. With all the information on it. So let's see what's first. Whatever that thing is. Uh, this, this right here. Oh, chocolate thing. There we go. Okay. Open it while I read it. So that one uh, is. That one is. Okay. Boiled milk and chocolate cake. So it says, crafted by Russia's most famous chocolate tier. Take a look at this yum. Are you looking awesome? You are now locking eyes with a Russian icon. Seriously, barring President Putin, there's no face more familiar. That's because this tree called a Alyonka, a popular Russian girl's name, is the country's most famous by far ever since it was first crafted in Moscow's Red October factory in 1966. Since then, several local ladies have claimed to be the inspiration behind the little girl on the wrapper, though the company insists she's not based on a real person. Here, the famous chocolate, the same exact recipe as in 66, coats a rich wafer cake filled with another local favorite, Shgushionka, a ridic ridiculously creamy caramel made by boiling sweetened condensed milk. There's surely no better way to show you Russia's sweet side or kick off your amazing Russian adventure, which would be filled with plenty more sweets and salty and savory and seriously scrumptious surprises to come. So here's the cake. This is what's inside. It's like a little wafer. <laughs> and it's actually very delicious. Caramel and cookie and chocolate. Who is the most delicious? Boiled milk and chocolate cake. Mm. I already know what I'm going to It's pretty good. Smiley face for me. Can I do it? Mm. No, I'll do it. That's pretty good. I'll take that piece. Wait, you do that one. Mm -hmm. So we got Lucy, Daddy, Alright. Lucy, Smiley. I'm gonna give it a smiley. Smiley. He's so smiley. Savor. Okay. Mm -hmm. So three smileys so far. That's a good one. Mm -hmm. What's next? Another candy bar? Ooh! This one looks good. It's like a little green A small one. It's got some sugar. Hey, Milk. This is my favorite. You don't need to So ripe pear milk chocolate. Rich milk chocolate with ooey gooey pear feeling. This Russian chocolate bar is full of beauty. No, we're not talking about the sleek wrapper ears or even the delicious looking chocolate side. We're talking about the pear feeling. You see, Russia is home to an extra sweet, highly sought after pear known as the Krasulia, which literally translates to beauty. So what are you waiting for? It's not a every day you get to take a, a bite of beauty, especially embroidered, oh, especially enrobed in luscious Russian milk chocolate. You got it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. got one. Thanks, sir. 
We can save this. Oh, it's Mary. Do we pair stuff at that? Oh, where's the purple? Krazulia. That's Krazulia. I'll do this. You like a little Krazulia bit? I'll give you a Okay. I give you a spot. Me too. So, do you see okay? Oh, it's my one. Sour quite good get on the inside. Mm -hmm. Okay, what's I next? Have to Some chips now. Sovietsky. So mm -hmm. so cheese potato chips. I open Made with absurdly addictive Russian cheese. Made with absurdly addictive Russian cheese. Time to try the devil's apple. You know it better as the potato. When potatoes were imported from America in the 1700s, Russian gave, Russians gave them the sinful name due to their absence in the Bible. Their odd shape didn't help either. Little did they know, Tsar Nicholas, I would, oh, Tsar Nicholas I would order potato planting in the 1850s paving the way for modern Russians to use them in practically everything from pierogi potato dumplings to vodka to these crispy chips coated in Russian slightly sweet and totally addictive Soviet ski cheese. Smells, Smells like regular potatoes. Oh, yeah, sweet. Are they good? They're like weird, but good. I give it tastes almost like popcorn. Way. I give it a smiley. It's good. Yeah, I'd like it too. Smiley for me. Smiley. I can't really taste Soviet it. Soviet cheese. Um, I'll give cheese. it a smiley. I can get one. Like, I don't really know. Oh, it's kind of like a heart shape. Okay. Mmm, let's go. One more. Mmm, that was good. Okay, next. Candy bar. I don't feel this. One. Yeah, this one. It is white chocolate and hazelnut cream wafer. Luscious hazelnut cream in a sugar cone shell. This yum is a fairy tale. No, really, its name. Ordinary Miracle is based on the title of a Russian fable in which a wizard transforms a man into a bear who then falls in love with a princess. Sounds like sounds more like an extraordinary miracle to us, but even that isn't as fantastic as the yum is inspired. Yes, we're saying that this crispy wafer filled with luscious hazelnut and white chocolate cream is even more incredible than a bear princess love story. It's sounds very good. messy. And it looks good. It's like a little white wafer. chocolate hazelnut and cream wafer. Mmm. Mm -hmm. my chocolate on the inside. Mm. That's very good. Oh, another mm. one. Mm -hmm. That's very good. Mmm. Mmm. -hmm. So I can't even say it's just. Yeah, so it's a definite smiley face. Lucy. Smiley for me. Smiley no, for me. So that's one, two, three, four, four so far. I want these smiley faces. And then we go to the little candies. <laughs> Exotic fruit jellies. Like that, I mean, that feeling of the soup. Oh, there's a ginormous one. 
cigar, exotic fruit jellies, ripe mango, black currant, mint, and strawberry pepper. Oh, I got the mint. I don't, I don't like get a strawberry one. Next to big candies. My wafer. I want big candies. Big old bonbon looking thing. <gasps> no. This is the inside. So we got coconut and white chocolate hazelnut balls. A creamy, nutty luxury. Another factoid you learned from the trivia that Russia boasts the coldest inhabited town on Earth. So you may be a bit shocked to learn that parts of the country are to get this subtropical. Take to the city of Sochi, located on the Black Sea coast. It's nicknamed the Russian River because, because of its 80 degrees some Fahrenheit summers, dolphins, and coconut bearing palms. Consider this shredded coconut coated white chocolate whole hazelnut filled ball to your ticket to the Russian tropics. Let's try it. Ooh, what's inside of it? It's like a wafer. Mmm. I want one of those one Yeah. You mean like you get on Target and Walmart? The chocolate one? Dark chocolate one? That's pretty good. Mm -hmm. I like like it. Mine. Mine, okay. Yeah. It has a peanut in the inside. No, no. What's you? Oh, it's it's done. Done. You're happy. I already ate it, though. That's part of it. Mm. Oh, yeah, it's off. Huh? I didn't get one. Bolete Mushroom Bread Bites. Taste Russia's award winning wild mushrooms. Dozens of basket-toting Russians are scouring the, scouring the forest Wait. floors of Siberia. What are they doing? Mushroom hunting. It's Russia's most popular pastime, so much so that most local 10-year-olds can easily distinguish edible varieties like the prize bolete from poisonous ones like the lethal death cat. But there's one thing Russians love more than hunting for mushrooms, eating them. You can partake with these crunchy, twice-baked bread rusks complete with bolete mushroom seasoning. All you have to do is hunt for the bag. It actually okay. kind of smells good. It's just uh, mushroom flavored bread. Mushroom? Smells good. That don't taste like anything. Maybe a little bit of mushroom. It's good. 
good for you? Yeah. Smiling? Yep. Look down, please. I'm gonna go to R-Rank. Like, is it a down? Yeah. Alright. There's the mushroom. Well, let's say mushroom bread bites. Next, we got nuts and milk chocolate wafer. What? Russia's softiest, or Russia's softest, nuttiest, cakeiest wafer. Nuts and milk chocolate wafer. All right. This yum takes us to Star, Starry Oskol, the headquarters of the company that makes it Slavyanka. When we asked the, their team which is of their products they thought our customers would love most, they said without a shadow of a doubt that it would be this one. We have to agree. After all, with layers of soft wafer filled with hazelnut coconut cream, a sprinkling of crushed peanuts, and a melting your mouth chocolate glaze, what's not to love? But take a bite and decide for yourself was their prediction correct? What do we think, Buff? <gasps> Yum. Mm. Nuts and milk chocolate wafer. Smiley faces. Next we got the big one. Oh. Orange marmalade and cinnamon brianic. Traditional gingerbread with candied orange jam. Get some jam on. Traditional gingerbread. Traditional gingerbread with candied orange jam. This Russian gingerbread, organic, tastes, takes us to the city of Tula, where making it is nothing short of a centuries old art form. To make one, a dough of honey, eggs, flour, cinnamon, and other spices is loaded onto an art, artfully carved wooden board which imprints the dough with its unique stamp design. Let me see. Mm. Design. Next comes the filling. In this case, super sweet orange jam. Then more dough, and finally the whole thing is flipped, coated in sugary syrup, and baked. The result is a, a Russian tradition that's amazing to behold, but even more amazing to eat. Let's try it. Can we try this piece first? The bread? That's good. Gingerbread's good. Mmm. 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 Okay, Lucy, smiley for me. Okay, right? Okay, right. <laughs> Up next. <clears throat> Almond white chocolate bar. Decadent white chocolate with whole almonds. It's easy to tell when it's springtime in Russia. You'll have to look for the fiery hills. Okay, the hills aren't really on fire. Pew, but they are covered in Prunus tenella, Russia's famous fire hill almond trees. Named for their branches covered on covered top to bottom with vibrant red flowers. 
Take a bite of this decadent white chocolate bar filled with whole Russian almonds and you'll taste for yourself why Russians are so excited to see their hills set aflame every spring. Ooh. Almond white chocolate bar. That's good. Marty Peach? Oh, you got this one. Mmm. Almond white chocolate bar is delicious. Mm. You think, babe? I don't like white chocolate, so I just ate the peanut. It's almond. You like it? I don't like white chocolate, so I'm giving it a Hmm? Yeah, I don't like white chocolate. I thought it was nice. At first, it tastes like mac and cheese. I don't know why, but... What do you give it? Mine's this. Mine's this. Up next... I said an egg. I'll give you it. Russian, Russian barbecue flavor, no skewers needed. Now for some real fire from the grill. Each bite of these light and crunchy crispy crisps is packed with the flavor of authentic Russian shashlik. A meat kebab that Russians have been cooking up for centuries of summer. Every family makes their own recipe. But they all typically include include lamb marinated with a zesty blend of onion, vinegar, and spices, and sometimes a splash of vodka. Grab some crisps and get ready for a mouthful of Russian summer. Okay. Weird design to me. Mm-hmm. Mm. No. Uh, uh. Interesting. Definitely tastes like barbecue. You don't like it? Okay. Yeah, maybe, yeah. Does you know? Oh, oh. <laughs> You're silly. Yes. Oh. No? You didn't try it. Yeah, I did. Yeah. Oh, no? Nice. No. No is for the kids and yes is for it the kids. It like smoke. What is so delicious. Barbecue oh. chips. What the best we got? Something pink. Strawberry, caramel, and vanilla gummies. Oh, yeah. A melody of sweet and chewy Russian candy. Walk down the streets of Moscow on November 4th, and you'll be bombarded with, tra dish with traditionally dressed Russians cheering, laughing, and waving massive Russian flags. That's because it's Unity Day, a beloved holiday celebrating the Russian people all working together to oust invaders in 1612. We think these candies will put you in the Unity Day spirit. Each is perfectly mouth-wateringly, mouth-watering on its own. Go we'll try them together, as the rapper suggests, and you will see how delicious Unity can be. So we're supposed to. But so we do. These two plus this one give you cotton candy, that flavor. These two give you that flavor, cotton candy. Well, I want to do, uh, I want to do the cotton candy one. Me too. Okay, then. I want to do cotton candy. This one I didn't get in there. My first one. So. Oh. I want to do both kinds. So, this one and this one. Okay. Okay. You got two of these. Okay, we'll try these. Yeah. I'm trying to stick it. It's all on Russian, so I can't tell what the flavor is. <laughs> Wait, so I eat them all together? You eat them at the same time, that gives you that flavor. Oh, that hard. Flavor is, but pretty good. Mm -hmm. 
Like it? No, 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 no. They're really chewy, but they're good. I'm going to smiley. Smiley. You don't taste me the cotton candy. But yeah, smiley. Okay, I'm just going to spray it out because I can't eat it. Lauren's a vanilla biscuit. That was the best one so far. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Box. Box. Orange and vanilla biscuit. Light and crispy with a touch of fresh oranges. Light and crisp with a touch of fresh orange. If it's Christmas time in Russia, expect lots and lots of oranges. You might be thinking a Zingis citrus fruit in the middle of winter. To that we say yes. Oranges were a rare commodity during the Soviet era. And as a result, they became a super special treat reserved for the holidays. They were a stocking supper staple. Nowadays, you'll often find them on Christmas decorations as well as in tons of holiday sweets like these thin and crisp crispy orange and vanilla cookies we'd love to find these in our stockings wouldn't you i Ooh, would these. you try to find not the broken ones because they're too it's like a flower little biscuit You can say find those one little circle ones. Mm -hmm. it's not bad. I give it a smiley. It tastes like an animal cracker. Yeah, but I still give it a smiley. Yep, but it's smiley. Smiley. Smiley, smiley. I'll give it an okay smiley. You didn't do an okay. I know, I'm just smiley, but it's an okay smiley. So it's like good and like okay. I guess, alright. Up next we got wheat food. Wheat food, but please. Ooh, it looks like pepper. Not open. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Red hot chili pepper bites. Thought Russians don't use spicy, think again. There's an assumed rule that the Russians don't do hot and spicy so much so that there's a local expression that perk to, to give pepper, which means to break or punish someone. But every rule has its exception. And in this case, that's this very yummy, or that's this very yum. These crispy, funky shaped potato crisps are seasoned with an addictive dust of fried, of dried red hot chili peppers. Suggesting that Russians are warming up to the idea of spicy food, at least when it tastes this good. It doesn't smell good. It smells like peppers. Yes, it does. It smells like buffalo. Mmm. Mmm. Good though. Smells it? Hot. it smells like that uh, uh, taco hot sauce. I give it a smell. I don't give a smiley because it tastes good, but it's not at all hot. It's not spicy at all. It's not weird though. I give it an A. Yeah, pretty close. Well, if you didn't, it's good. I just did it. That's a little long. But if you eat it, it's a little bit. Alright, next we got the other biscuits. Yep. Um, uh, Ginger and cinnamon biscuits. Crispy Russian cookies, perfect for tea time. Time for tea. Like with Khrushchev and Pepsi, Russia's love affair with tea began when a Mongolian ruler gave Tsar Michael I a taste in 1638. Then came the Great Tea Road 
linking China and Russia, where tons of tea were imported by camel caravans. By 1900, Russia was home to the largest tea maker in the world, and citizens were drinking it at all times. So if you want to try these crispy spice biscuits like a Russian, we recommend pouring yourself a cup. Pouring yourself a cup? Some tea. Ginger and cinnamon biscuits. Wow! Not so far. Mmm, I did it as my. Yes, I did. Tastes like a weak gingerbread. Huh? Tastes, tastes like kind of like a weak gingerbread. But it's so good. A weak ginger snack. <laughs> Lime and mint dark chocolate bar. What next? We're almost done. Lime and mint dark chocolate bar. Rich dark cocoa with a slight citrus twist. Mint and lime. Sounds more like a vodka garnish than a chocolate bar, right? Not in Russia. Vodka is consumed straight up without even ice cubes. Followed by a pickle, a piece of salty herring, or a slice of rye bread. It's basically law. But while Russia's vodka customs are strict, their rules about chocolate are much more relaxed, making room for decadent new flavors like this new chocolate bar. Like this dark chocolate bar infused with a dash of lime and a touch of mint. The only chaser you'll want is another bite. Have to open. Oh, I don't like dark chocolate. You love it. I like dark chocolate. <laughs> dark chocolate and mint, or lime and mint dark chocolate. Good. Mm. I'll give you a chocolate bar. I'll give you a smiley oh, face. Sure. Is that a smiley face? <laughs> yeah. Okay. No? <laughs> okay. Okay, next. <laughs> Caramel and Nuts Milk Chocolate Bar. Peanut Hazelnut Caramel Chocolate Heaven. Kicking off the countdown, we have the notoriously nutty Russian chocolate bar known as the Golden Step. Why did it make the cut? Well, hazelnuts are a Russian go-to, in part because they're among the, the few nuts that can be grown in the country's cold climate, along with pine nuts and walnuts. And peanuts are almost just as beloved. Russia constantly ranks in the global top five peanut importers. Here, both nuts unite in caramelly, chocolatey harmony, leaving this yum a spot, earning this yum a spot on the list, and maybe a spot in your heart too. So, guy, caramel and some peanuts. Nuts and milk chocolate. Lucy, okay. Me and no. I'm okay. Alright, guys, take three. Up next. Down to the last three. Grilled steak yeah, bread you, bites. Give me a no. A no? Yeah, I don't like it. Russia style beef, but in a crunchy bread. 
Bread isn't just beloved in Russia, it's respected as it is a vital component of Slavic traditions. For example, the centuries-old custom of greeting important guests with a fresh loaf. So you can probably imagine there's nothing worse to Russian than a wasted bread, hence the invention of these twice-baked bread rusts. A delish, deliciously creative way to make use of every last morsel. Their local fave snack or soup topping. Crunch into the steak flavored variety and you might just find yourself with a, a reinvigorated respect for bread too. There you go. It smells good. No. Like a crouton. I just in the okay. I'll do a jellyfish. I'll do okay too. I'm gonna do it okay. Next. The funniest one is that. Um, we got Ooh, sour cream and un and green onion potato chips. Fact, no one does sour cream like Russia. That's pro original heavy. You might think you love sour cream, but we're willing to bet you don't love it as much as Russians. That's why these crisps landed the number two spot on our list. Russians eat sour cream for breakfast on pancakes called bellini, lunch on sour beet soup called borscht, dinner in their beloved beef stroganoff, and even dessert on fruit dumplings called garenki. They even use it to soothe sunburns. But our favorite sour cream chop concoction is clear. These extra oniony chips dark down during snack time. <laughs> down face for Lucy, down face for me. I mean, I love sour cream onions, but those are not good. I like it now, too. Me too. Those were not very good. So there's that one. And then you see this one? And then last, we got the dill pickle puffs. Oh, you love pickles. Oh, yeah. Dill pickle puffs. What about them? Do you guys like pickles? Tasty proof that Russians are pickle pros. The number one spot goes to pickles. Why? Well, locals rely on pickles, on pickled cucumbers, tomatoes, mushrooms, and even watermelons to sustain them through the winter. Plus, pickles are a Russian secret to happiness. According to an old local proverb, pickling is a spiritual activity. As the saying goes, a pleasant mood must be found, rude encounters forgotten, and spouses forgiven. When all this is done, then it is a day for pickling. These happy pickles are said to send good vibes to those who eat them, which means these addictive puffs often make you very, very happy. It has to smell like pickling. Woo, that's like a pickling. Where are we? Pickles. Want to buy a little puff? It's a recipe for Russian pancakes called blini. I mean, pickles are okay. Those are pickles. In Russia, the average bedtime is 12.51 a.m. That tastes like a pickle flavored Cheeto. I'm not really into pickles, so. I don't like pickles with that pepper. Okay, I'll give it a no. Okay, I like pickles, but that's that type of pickle. Okay, after we tried everything, what's our favorite? My favorite? What's our favorite? I already have one. Dog. Which one's that? The big candy? Yeah. You? Same? Uh, no, mine is the gummy. Little gummy heart. Number 12. Number 6. 
Which one was the worst? Um. I don't know. Maybe it was. Wait, I don't know. These chips. Wait, which one did I put down? Or the chocolate bar that was good. The peanut butter chocolate bar. Oh, this one. This one was nasty. Yeah, it was well, this one? We all said no to the chocolate bar. Yeah. We all said no to this. Yeah. What about this one? Oh no, you said it. Uh, I know it's okay. So how about one, two, seventeen, the chocolate bar, and nineteen, the chips. And the weirdest? Was the pickle. No, oh, it's yeah, not okay. the pickle. Right, guys, the pickle. Alright. Vote on an upcoming box. So we vote Turkey, Jordan, or Israel. Turkey! I'm gonna say Israel too. Israel? There's our votings. We vote for Israel. That is it. So. Thanks for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe. And you can check out other box subscription boxes on my channel. And we'll see you next time for the next month's box.